the Ordovician period. What was it, and when did it happen? Who defined it, and what happened to make it an important part of the evolution of life? Tune into today's life and land packed edition of Down the Line. Alright, welcome back. I'm your host, Pete, and we're just going to jump into it. So, uh, the Ordovician period was a geologic period and system, the second out of six in the Paleozoic era. It spans from around 488 to 444 million years ago. The Ordovician was named after the Celtic tribe of the Ordovices and was defined by Charles Lapworth in 1879 to resolve a dispute between followers of the almighty Adam Segwick, the god of these episodes, because his name is seriously fucking everywhere. I, I mean, seriously, it seems like he named and proposed like half of the content in these episodes. Okay, so Adam Segwick and Roderick Murchison were having an argument because they were both placing the same rock beds in northern Wales into the Cambrian and Silurian systems. That's right, guys. We've got a fucking nerd fight on our hands. So until Charles Lapworth, who, like I said, uh, defined the order of the scene itself, he recognized that the fossil fauna in the disputed uh, strata were different from those of either the Cambrian and Silurian systems. He placed them in a system of their own. So he's pretty much like, guys, stop fighting. You're both wrong. The fossils don't belong with either the Cambrian or the Silurian systems because they belong in the Ordovician system. Oh, and what's that? It just happens to be some shit I just made up right fucking now. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're actually going to go to the past now. We're going to fucking time travel. So at this time, invertebrates, namely mollusks and arthropods, dominated the oceans. The great Ordovician biodiversification event, which was an evolutionary radiation of animal life throughout this period, considerably increased the diversity of life. Fish, uh, the world's first true vertebrates, continued to evolve and those with jaws may have uh, first appeared late in this period. Life continued to advance during the Ordovician as it did in the earlier Cambrian period, although the end of this period was marked by the Ordovician uh, and Silurian extinction event, just right on the border of those two. What happened was another destructive ice age, the third largest of the five major extinction events in Earth's history, at least in terms of uh, the percentages of genera that became extinct. So around this time also, about a hundred times as many meteorites struck the Earth per year compared to today. So it's still not really a time period that you want to live in. And, and that's kind of like a, a pattern that I've noticed is that it's like these, uh, this life is starting to become more abundant at this part. And then at the very end of the period, there's just this crazy extinction event. And that kind of seems to happen a lot, actually. It's like, I don't, I don't know like necessarily why it does that, but I just noticed that, like a pattern of that where this, where as soon as life starts to get more and more abundant, there's always some crazy extinction event. And I, and I, I don't know if it's just more common back then. I don't think it was. I think it's just that the time spans are so much bigger than what we use today. Like these are millions of years apart from each other, that it just seems like they're happening so often. But I mean, it seems like they're probably the same amount. So it's like in a, in a couple of million years, we might have an extinction event that wipes out humans, and it might just be as abundant as they are in the like kind of time spans that we're using now. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the early Ordovician, which is uh, split into these two stages: the uh, Tremendocian and Floian stages. So the Tremendocian is the early stage of the Ordovician. Together with the later Floian stage, it forms the later Ordovician epoch. It lasted from around 488 to 479 million years ago. I looked up the uh, pronunciation for pretty much all of these, and I got a lot of them, mostly for like the name of the species that appear during these periods. But it's it's hard to find like the pronunciation for the actual stages, so I'll, I'll try my best for it. But um, I don't know how cons- <laughs> how consistent I'll be with it with making them right, but. The Tremidocian is named after the village Tremidog in Wales, and its beginning is defined as the first appearance of the conodont species, conodont being an extinct fish that resemble eels. And this is going to get fucking ridiculous, but it's called Iapitognifus flatavus. So take what you will with that. Use that uh, fucking information. Chew on it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, these, these like, uh, if you saw the last episode, you know, like, all these fucking species names are made by people who hate <laughs> people that don't speak like that. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, they, they want to use these giant fucking words, and I don't know why we, like, I up pig, I up pitognophus is a fucking ridiculous word that should never be uttered ever again. God, fucking damn it. <laughs> 
planktonic graptolites, an important index fossil, also appear during this stage. And uh, I actually looked up what these things are, these uh, graptolites. These things are weird. They're like this stringy, rope-like life form that form a shape similar to an X. They, they kind of look like, like uh, what are they called? The uh, double helixes. Like those like um, DNA lines. I don't, I don't know. I'm fucking talking out of my ass right now. But, but that's kind of what it, what it reminded me of, at least. So uh, the next stage is called the Floian. And uh, it's the second stage of the Ordovician. It extended from around 479 to 472 million years ago. It was named after Flo, a village in Vaster Gotland, southern Sweden. I'm not going to even fucking bother to look up the pronunciation for that because fuck that shit. But it's defined as the first appearance of the Graptolite species. That's right, this era is just filled with these weird X's. And this one's another long ass name. It's uh, Tetragraptus Approximatus. So, another one of those fucking weird ones. That one was a little bit easier to um, pronunciate. A lot of them are called like, like Approximatus and like... They sound like fucking made up words. <laughs> but now we're going to get into the Middle uh, middle Ordovician, which is the Depinkian and Darwinian. Darwinian. Which I'm pretty sure is named after fucking Darwin. But that one's a little bit easier to pronounce for me just because it looks like Darwin. But the uh, Depinkian stage is the third stage of the Ordovician and the first stage of the Middle. It lasted around 472 to 468 million years ago. I found something about a conodont, uh, the, the eel things that I was talking about, that popped up around this time, but I couldn't find as many other sources to support it as I would have liked, so uh, I'm not going to add it in. I, I just thought, like, I would just bring it up, but I'm not going to get as into uh, the research that I found for it just because I couldn't find sources that I thought were as reliable. Um, and the next is the Darwinian, which is the upper stage of the Middle Ordovician. It lasted from around 468 to 461 million years ago. The beginning of this stage is defined as the first appearance of the Graptolite species, Unduograptus ostrodentalis. <laughs> and then here's the late Ordovician, which is the last, uh, the last, like, what is it called? Like, these these ones in it are the last stages. So this is San, uh, Stanbian, Catian, and the final one, which is called the Hernantian stages. So the Sandbian is the uh, first stage of the upper, upper Ordovician. It lasted from around 461 to 456 million years ago. Its beginning is defined as the first appearance of the Graptolite species, Nemograptus gracilis. <laughs> the next is the Catian, the second stage of the Upper Ordovician. The Catian began around 456 and lasted until about 446 million years ago. The stage was marked by the first appearance of the Graptolite species, Diplacanthograptus <laughs> caudatus. <laughs> so... Jesus Christ, I'm, this is the last one right here, the Hernantian. It's the seventh and final internationally recognized stage of the Ordovician period of the Paleozoic era. So we're almost done now. I'm already getting fucking sick of pronouncing these. Uh, the last one, the fucking... The last one that we did, was, last episode, was just so fucking bad. These ones are, like, way easier to pronounce and just easier to get my head around. The last one was just fucking ridiculous. I'm glad we got through that one. But uh, it was of short duration, this uh, Hernantian stage. Uh, stage. It lasted from around 446 to 444 million years ago. The beginning of this stage is defined as the first appearance of the Graptolite species, Normal Ograptus Extraordinaris. Great fucking name, guys. Whoever named that. Normal Ograptus Extraordinarius. What the fuck? But uh, this one has a lot more that I can actually talk about with it. That can kind of like paint a picture of what this, uh, what the Ordovician itself was really like. And I'll talk about that through the paleography. During the Hernantian, much of the world's landmass was gathered into a supercontinent called Gondwana, which occupied extreme southern latitudes and covered the South Pole. I'm pretty sure we talked about Gondwana in a previous episode. I don't know if it's the last one, but it was definitely in, a, in one, like a previous episode. This includes uh, South America, Africa, much of Australia, the bulk of India, and Antarctica. What is now West Africa was then located at the Pole, while South America was close by, joined to Africa along the latter's west coast. So all the, like, the, the geographic locations are kind of like combined together, and they were just very different from today. You can look up a map of like Gondwana and, and the areas around it, the land around it. It is pretty different. It's kind of cool to see like what the land might have looked like at the time. Along Africa's east coast were Antarctica and India, while Australia lay just to the north of them, straddling the equator. 
To the north of Australia was New Guinea, and to the north lay a vast, uninterrupted sea, known today as the Pantalassic Ocean, and I know we talked about this ocean in a previous episode. Not yet joined with what would become North America, Florida, southern Georgia, and the coastal areas of Mississippi, Alabama, and South Carolina were wedged into a gap between Africa and South America, and they were located very near the South Pole. The rest of North America, called Laurentia by scientists, do you, do you guys remember Laurentia? Uh, it used to be a supercontinent in, I believe, the Archean Eon, which is like the second of that Earth series that we started and, uh, and now it's kind of like a shell of its former self. It's not really a supercontinent anymore. Um, it lay to the north and west of Gondwana, at, like Australia, uh, low and relatively warmer climates. The eastern state of today's United States were located around the southeast coast of the continent, while the coastal areas of what are now the southeastern states faced south. To the east of Laurentia, across a long, narrow sea, was Baltica. And that was another one. <laughs> These are all like... Uh, like uh, supercontinents that are kind of like not supercontinents anymore. Gondwana is the only one now, and the other ones are just like, you know, pieces of it have left, and now it's kind of like a shell of what it used to be. Um, so uh, Baltica was composed of northern Norway, Sweden, Finland, the UK, Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, northern Germany, eastern Ireland, and Russia, west of the uh, Ural Mountains. So, I mean, there's still like a lot of land, but it just goes to show like how Gondwana is the supercontinent how much fucking bigger it must have been than, you know, Baltica, which had all these fucking places in it, and it's still just considered, like, small next to it, you know? Stretching westward from its south uh, west tip was an island arch known as Avalonia by modern scientists. And I, I love these, like, Lord of the Rings-sounding names. I, I'm such a fucking dork, but I, I keep, like, thinking of it like that, like, some fucking, you know, hobbits that live there <laughs> oh god i'm such a fucking loser <laughs> this consisted of what is now the uh, western part of ireland and eastern coastal regions of newfoundland nova scotia new brunswick and new england so uh, let's end this episode with a look at life around the end of the ordovician period this is going to be a little more exciting the early part of the hernantian was characterized by cold temperatures major glaciations and a severe drop in sea, in sea level and this is going to foreshadow for something you should already see coming. Many scientists believe that this climatic oscillation caused a major extinction event that took place during this time. In fact, the Hernantian, also known as the End Ordovician, and the we talked about this, the Ordovician and Salarian mass extinction event, represents the third largest event in geologic history. Approximately 85% of sea-dwelling life died. And this marks the end of the period. <laughs> the period is the fucking marked by the 85% of sea-dwelling life dying. There's this fucking gnarly, like, extinction event. And that's how this episode ends. It's a dark ending, but next episode should pave the way for more advanced life. And that's kind of the pattern that you're going to notice. I, I don't know for sure if next episode ends with another extinction event, but, I mean, the way that we're on right now, it kind of looks like it's probably going to do something like that. And then that just keeps paving the way for more advanced life. So, thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you next episode with... I think it's a Salarian. Uh, so, I'll see you guys next time.